If you have any version of Unify Security Gateway or Unify Dream Machine, this video is right for you, because we will go through the available Unify Internet Security settings. To understand if they are truly working, we will set and then we will test them whenever that's possible. Coming up! What's up? Kirill Pejansk is here, the internet security settings in the Unify controllers and their ease of use are one of the features that differentiate Unify from the other brands on the market. Deep packet inspection, threat management, intrusion detection and intrusion prevention system as well as Honeypot will be explained and put to test in this video. Starting right now! Go to Settings, Backup before we continue further, let's first back up the Unify controller configuration. That way, if something is messed up, we can always restore our settings safely. Change this to settings only and download the file. That's it, we have now our settings backupped. We are going to switch from the classic to the new Unify controller settings. I know this is hard. But I guess the classic settings will be gone sooner than later, as Ubiquiti are pushing the new settings more and more. The good thing is that we can switch back at any time, at least for now. If your Unify controller have similar look, that means you are using the classical view and at the time of making this video, you can try the new settings by go to settings, try new settings and you can easily switch back from any menu by clicking on this banner here, classic settings and you will go back but we will stick with the new settings for this tutorial now let's finally start with the Unify Internet Security Settings and Threat Management Modes these settings can protect your network from attacks and malicious activities I will directly go to the security section and here I can find Internet Threat Management and Traffic and Device Identification. I'll start with the first. I have three options here in general. I can disable Internet Threat Management and I will not be protected in any way or I can enable it and choose either Intrusion Detection System or Intrusion Prevention System. The difference between both of these options is that IDS or intrusion detection system will only notify me for malicious activity but will not block them and intrusion prevention system or IPS will also block them have in mind that enabling IDS and IPS that is intrusion detection system and intrusion prevention system may limit your connectivity throughput these below are the maximum values I'm with the UDM, so this is my maximum throughput that I could achieve. It's far more than my ISP provides, so I'm good to go. You can customize sensitivity. And here I can select my system sensitivity level. If I expand this, you can see all of the options. And if I increase the level, the number of active options will be also increased. As you can see on level 5, every option here is activated. I'll leave them to 3, for example, and in this way only peer-to-peer -peer DNS and user agents will not be under Internet Threat Management. When I'm happy with the changes, I can click Apply. One of the biggest Internet threats these days is called not smashing the like button. To protect against it, just hit the like button gently until it turns blue. Now let's continue. Network scanners are the next section that I want to show you. Let's see for what we can use Threat Scanner. Unfortunately, this is only valid for UDM and UDM Pro devices and not for Unify Security Gateways. We have two options here. The first one is called Threat Scanner. And if you enable this, it will auto-scan your clients for open ports and it will try to identify potential security threats. The results can be seen under the Threat Management section and Point Scans. 
These are the scans, these are the open ports, and these are the best effort guess for the operating system of the clients. So it is good to have this. The other option under the same section, let me go back to show you. Settings, security, internet threat management, was the internal honeypot. Internal honeypot feature is a passive detection system that listens for LAN clients attempting to gain access to unauthorized services. If you enable this, you have the possibility to create a honeypot. And I'll try to create one. Let's say in this network. And I'll just hit create. And now this IP will be virtually created in my network and all of the major and popular ports will be open and ready. And if some client tries to connect them and tries to brute force or try to activate some kind of attack on these ports, on this particular IP, because everything is open there, I'll be notified about this activity immediately. So let's try this. I'll open a new terminal and I'll try to connect using SSH to this IP. As you can see, I connected there, but nothing happens. And if I close and try Telnet, for example, on the same IP, you can even see that there is a login Debian Linux. It seems legit. And if I now go again to threat management, but this time Honeypot tab, I will see these attempts right here with the source IP port and timestamp. And if I click on this row, I can add this IP to deny list. Threat management allow list is simply a white list of IPs, networks or subnets that will not be affected by the above internet threat management settings. I can simply create a white list from here that can be from IP address, network or subnet. And finally, signature suppression. From here, you can mute the alert on certain signatures. And we conclude with this internet threat management and we will go to traffic and device identification. Next on the list is the deep packet inspection, which will allow your USG or UDM to analyze the traffic on your network. <coughs> Thanks to DPI, you can go to the statistics section and see very interesting data. You can enable or disable deep packet inspection from here, as well as device fingerprinting, which is trying to identify devices on your network. You can also clear the deep packet inspection data already collected from this little button here. And if deep packet inspection is enabled, you can see the statistics section which is very interesting and very useful. These pie charts here are showing the overview of your social network usage, as well as network protocols, streaming media, apps, users, and also you can go to any clients you wish. For example, my Amazon Echo device, and you can see the traffic section and you can check device by device to see if there is something wrong or something suspicious which can be very useful sometimes. Next feature that I want to show you just let me go back settings, security, traffic and device management uh, are these restriction definitions and restriction assignments I will create first a restriction definition. I can either use the default one or I can add new group. I'll name this group test. Now I can add restriction to this group. I can select a category here, for example, instant messengers. And as application, I will search for WhatsApp. I can also add MSN and whatever I wish. Now I can block traffic 
lock events and enable this restriction. So I'll enable this and this, these two options. That means block WhatsApp traffic and MSN traffic and also enable this restriction. And I'll click add restriction. Now I can assign this group to either my Wi-Fi or my wired network. So if I click on my Wi-Fi network restriction, I can assign it on this network named A and this will be my newly created group test assign restriction. Quick question for you. What is your favorite security feature in Unify Controller? Let me know in the comments below. Very easy. Now, every device connected to this A Wi-Fi network should have WhatsApp restriction, which can be very handy if you wish to restrict some applications, services, and so on. And last but not least is the Unify GYP filtering, from where you can block individual countries. Blocking is as easy as navigating to the map, clicking on a country, and confirming by clicking block. The Unify network controller allows configuring the GYP filtering traffic direction. Any sort of engagement on this channel does really help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. So you make sure that you hit the subscribe, like and bell buttons if you enjoyed this video. Also, feel free to add me on Twitter by searching for this username. I'm trying to post there frequently. You can also find me on my Discord server as well. If you want to secure this channel existence, you can become one of my supporters. You can see exactly how in the video description below. If you are just entering the smart home world, you could also buy my digital product called Smart Home Getting Started Actionable Guide. I really hope that you find this information useful and you now know more about the Unify Internet Security Settings available in the USG and UDM devices. Stay safe and don't forget, home smart but not hard. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.